Morning peeps, let's do this. First things first, uh, my name is Dave and math is the game here. I want to thank everybody for contributing on the Facebook post. We have some new people this time. That's good stuff. I like to see new people trying out the problem. That's what we want to have. Participation is key and people are commenting and get going back and forth. Um, before we dive into the problem, I want to talk about a couple things. If you recall, in the last two videos, I talked about math anxiety and math as to use for training your brain. So if you haven't seen those, you can go back and see them from my Facebook. But I want to talk about another topic is um, catchphrase you hear is sound body, sound mind. You hear that a lot. Uh, what does that mean? That means a healthy body supports a strong mind. So I'm bringing this up because I see this a lot nowadays with students that they're staying up late, they're getting up early, they're drinking monster drinks and big coffees and they're eating McDonald's and pizza and they're not taking care of their bodies. So that automatically puts them at a disadvantage and it's difficult to work with them because they already have, if they could just resolve these taking care of their body issues, they would be much more successful. So in talking about this, I want to make a point that there's three things that you need to support a strong body. I keep to keep this simple. It's sleep, water, and sugar. So sleep. You need to sleep at least eight hours a night, preferably like eight and a half or nine, depending. Some people need more or less. So ideally, you want to go to bed early, early as you can, and get up early. I think you sleep better when you go bed. Go to bed early. Uh, water. You need to drink. So you need to be hydrated. So your body's like a machine, and the water is like oil in your car. If you don't have oil in your car, it's not going to run real well. So you want to be hydrated. And the third thing is sugar. So your body runs on sugar. Uh, you don't, that's your fuel source, fuel source. That's the gasoline. So there's different ideas about how, what the perfect diet is. And we're not going to get into that here, but you got to be getting enough, a sufficient amount of carbs to run your body on. That's the way I would look at that. So potatoes, rice, uh, corn, where, what kind of sugars are you eating? What kind of starch sources are you eating that are going to fuel your body? So once you get those three taken care of, then you have a basis, right? You have a foundation. And then I would add on top of that sport. So now your body's feeling good. Now you go outside and you go for a run or you go play soccer or run track or whatever. Then you have, that's, that's your sport. That's, that's good for your body too. And then on top of that, I would say after you've done those, then you train your brain. So after you've done those, then you can think, problem solve, write poetry, paint, whatever. But with those, if you have that basis, the, the thinking and the training your brain comes so much easier, especially for me. If I miss any one of those four, then I'm, I'm just not operating at top capacity. So for your kids and for, you know, uh, any students that you work with or young people try to reinforce and probably show them through your own habits, right? One thing I've learned with this is being a parent and teaching with kids, working with kids, they won't listen to what you say. They're going to do what you do. So we should, you know, try to set a good example for your kids and for any youth that are around you to take care of yourself, go to bed early, tell, tell them you're eating right, exercise, all that stuff. So... I'm going to leave you with one more point too, because I found this is, this was interesting and I'm going to talk more about training the brain because I, this is like an interesting topic to me, but you think about training the brain versus training a muscle. So say you're, say you're training a muscle and you're like doing a bicep curl and you know, that's how you train a muscle. The muscle moves, right? So it's, it's, it's using energy and you're creating movement. The brain doesn't move at all. So you'd think, oh, okay. So if I'm, the brain doesn't move, so it's probably not going to use a lot of energy, create a lot of power. But that's not the case at all. So if you, you can Google this online, but your brain consumes energy at 10 times the rate of the rest of your body per gram of tissue. So even though your brain doesn't, doesn't there's not, it's not moving, it's not, it's not really doing anything, it's just sitting up there. It's using energy at 10 times the rate of like your muscles. So it just goes to show you what an amazing... Uh, organ the brain is doesn't create movement but it's using energy and generating power at, at a pretty high rate which uh, I guess gives you an idea of what it's capable of so we're going to talk more about that later but that's just my uh, snapshot into that um, all right 
let's dive into this problem. So this is a this is a fifth grade problem, and I worked on it with a fifth grader this weekend. And this is how they're teaching math to fifth graders nowadays. I think back for us when we were in school, we did fractions, we multiplied, divided, and they kind of left it at that. Now they're introducing word problems right away. I think it's a good thing uh, as long as they don't turn the kid off to math and have them say, well, I can't do this, so I, I, I'm not good at math, or I quit math. But ideally, all that addition, subtraction, and multiplication, those are all just tools for problem solving. You have to be able to deal with word problems, and it's better to introduce the two of them right away instead of waiting until they're in eighth grade and hitting them with it and saying, what did and they would say, well, this isn't math, what is, what is this? So they're giving them these tough problems, uh, and then they just have to work through it with the math that they know. So I noticed on this chain, one of the uh, Papiti, he did linear algebra to solve the problem, a system of linear equations, which is great, you can do that. But the problem when you're showing a fifth grader is they don't know linear algebra, they don't even know algebra. They know counting, arithmetic, and they know how to draw pictures, models. So you'd be surprised what they can solve just with that. So when I was explaining this problem, or ones like it, we that's the process we use. So I, we can't really couldn't use linear algebra to show them how to do it. So let's dive into this thing. Um, here's the problem. You can pause the video if you want to take a shot at it if you haven't tried it already. But it reads like this. Alan scored 14 points for answering all 15 questions in a test. For every correct answer, he got two points. And for every wrong answer, he lost two. How many did he answer correctly? So this is like an SAT where you get penalized for a wrong answer. Um, and he did answer all the questions. So what's the first step? Uh, I guess with any math problem, and I'll pound, I will say this for all time, is always draw a picture. It's the easiest thing to do. It helps you think about stuff. And that's what they teach the students to do. In, in uh, For a fifth grader, they want to draw a model. They call it a model. So let's just draw like a thing that lets us count. So we have this bar here. We know there's, there's 15 questions, right? I just drew a bunch of lines. Let's count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15. Okay, each box, these boxes represent the questions in the test. Okay, so now we have something to start with. And a lot of times we'll, we'll do this. This is 15 questions. Okay, so now the way to approach this, I think, is let's just start looking at all the possibilities. So, say, he, what's a perfect score? He answers 15, gets them all right. His score is going to be a 30. Okay. Say he answers 14. So say let's say he gets one wrong. So that means he got 28 points for the ones he answered right, 14 times 2. Um, but now he's going to lose two points for this. So you got we'll say plus 28 minus 2 for the for the missed question. That makes his net score, and we'll put this as uh, net down here. So his net score in that case was what? Uh, 26. Okay, so let's just, and then we'll just keep going here. So say he got two wrong, that means he got 13 right, that's plus 26. And you can see that these are always just going down by two. So I'll do plus 24, plus 22. Running out of room, of course. Okay, so let's let's work with what we have here. We'll start with this. So if it's plus twenty six minus four, that means because he it means he got two wrong. Over here, you can put another column too if you wanted to to say this is how many he got wrong. So he got zero wrong, one wrong, two wrong, three wrong, four wrong, and this is the net score. Okay, so the net score here is 22. So now if he, got, if he got three wrong, that means he lost six. Now where are we at? 18. Okay, so now we're getting close. Because we know he has to, he scored 14 points. So let's try this next pair. If he got, if he's got four wrong, that means he got, 
how many did he get right then? It means he got 11 right. So he got 22 points for the 11 right. And then he's going to lose 8. And then 22 minus 8 is 14. This is what we want here. This gives us his 14 points that he scored. That means he got 4 wrong, which means he got 11 right. So that's the answer. That's what I'm getting. So no linear algebra, just a counting problem. Draw a model. And this is similar to the problem I think we did last week where you're just – there is no – if you do a linear system, you're going to have one answer. But otherwise, just set it up and start iterating. Start trying numbers and see what, that, see what works. I think that's an important first step. So that's it. There you have it. Um, this, this, this is a good one. I like these fifth grade ones because when you look at them originally – and this happens to me too. You look at it and you're like, oh, no, this is going to be hard. I hope I know how to do this. And you just dive in, draw a model, and start trying stuff. And iterating is always a nice thing to do because you just – at least it gets you in motion. The worst thing to do is look at it and freeze. Start plugging in numbers. Start trying things. So that's it. So one thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out like I usually do. And today we had a new person on the chain. I got my buddy Wags. Good job, Wags. Mike Wagner was, uh, he was in high school with me and he's like a carpenter. He's like, he's a craftsman. If you see what this guy builds, he on, posts on Facebook, he, he builds stuff. So unlike me who sits and stares at math every day, here's a guy who's building stuff and he's not afraid to jump in and take a shot at the problem. So I think that's good. So good to see you, Wags. I hope to see you next time. And uh, that's it. Post comments. You know, if you have any questions or have any ideas for problems, let me know. And uh, we'll keep rolling. I think I might put, I don't want to sign myself up for it, but I might put another one up this week uh, so we can all give a shot at it. And uh, we'll keep rolling. All right, train your brain. Good luck. Have a good rest of the week. See you. Bye.